And we're on the line this morning with Clint Weimer. He is the superintendent of the Marion Center School District. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. And Clint, it's good to talk with you. I wanted to be sure we got Marion Center on the line with us here through the summer months. Make sure you guys are still okay out there. Yeah, we're, we're doing well. We got our summer splash program, our summer school program kicked off, and summers are busy here. We're trying to fill our vacancies and get ready for a productive fall. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I just saw this study today that says the average parent deals with 219 hours of brain fog a year. Uh, well, sometimes kids can uh, deal with a little brain fog as well, and I guess that's what summer programs are all about, keeping them sharp for the fall, huh? That That's our intent. For those families that wish to send the kids in, we're running uh, transportation, and we're taking all comers, and I'm not telling you anything, Todd. You know, it's been a challenging past year and a half or so, and we just want to make sure those kids that want to stay sharp and clear some of the cobwebs out have that opportunity. As you review this past year and and more, because the pandemic actually started in March of 2020 and uh, the whole world got changed upside down, uh, and you look at the way the students have progressed um, is there a noticeable difference or any difference at all that you notice uh, in, in their progression as students as opposed to what would be considered normal? You know, Todd, I can't say enough about how well our students have progressed and been flexible and uh, understanding of, I guess, the, the whole pandemic. Um, they, young people never cease to amaze me. They, they wanted to be here. Um, they needed the socialization. And when they were here, and again, I think we did pretty well here at Marion Center, staying out of the way of vast quarantines and so forth. Um, they came to work and got the job done. So I'm very pleased and very happy with the progression of our students, and we're just we're just very hopeful to have a normal school year next year. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I noted this past year uh, is when you go to some other districts out of the area, maybe for a basketball playoff or something of that nature, um, and and you have schools that are fairly new in comparison to our schools in Indiana County. Our buildings here in Indiana County aren't the newest ones around, uh, and so they're built for uh, or built during another era, and and so they seem smaller, they seem cramped. The hallways are smaller and 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 narrower. Uh, and so the challenges became a little bit more for Indiana areas, uh, uh, the Indiana County areas, the school districts. Um, but you guys seem to have uh, handled that well. I noted when I got there for my first basketball game last year uh, that the markings in the hallways were very clear about um, how it was that students were to, got to conduct themselves in that hall to make the, the proper distancing. You know, Todd, again, we we did our best, as, as, you, as you said, and all my peers will agree that um, our Indiana County schools were, were built in a different era, like you say, but um, we followed the recommendations and mandates to the best of our ability um, under our current structure, and it, the kids were very cooperative, and, you know, I, I think, and I could speak for all the, all the superintendents, we did the best we could and tried to do the best we could for our kids through, that pan, through the pandemic. Yeah. All right. So last night, school board passed a budget. Uh, and uh, we talked about this with uh, Mike Vukovic, actually, last week, about uh, the difficulty of preparing a budget when you don't know what your state appropriation is going to be. Um, and so last night you were able to react because your your budget actually uh, was voted upon in its final form after you knew a little bit more about the state allocation. You don't know everything that there is to know. But if you could spend a few moments talking about putting together a budget when there's so much uncertainty about the finances? Well, I, I think, Todd, to, to be truthful with you, this has been one of the most challenging budget seasons for us because in Indiana County, we're always scrambling to make ends meet. Um, but with, with all the grants that have come down through the federal government and the state government for um, relief from the pandemic, and then always, and you know this, we're always waiting to see what the state does but we usually have to have our budget passed before the state gives us any direction. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the ninth hour there, uh, we found out that the budget looked like it was going to pass, and we saw that where some of the other um, streams of money were going to go. So we made some tweaks. Again, Marion Center is not raising taxes, and um, we put a budget together that will get us through this year, and we will continue to filter through how we're going to spend the, the ESSERS money and the grant money 
um, and not get ourselves jammed up because we know it's one-time monies, um, and we don't want to be relying on those expenses to balance our budget. Down through the years, of course, Marion Center has had discussions about the, the, the high school building itself, especially, uh, and about its viability uh, and uh, whether there need to be uh, construction projects. Um, there was at one point uh, a few years ago even a proposal to build a, a new school. Um, the adequacy of that building to meet uh, the needs for today, uh, is it in good shape? It is. It's structurally in good shape. I mean, we have we have a safe place for kids to attend school, but Todd is, as our community knows, our high school portions of it are, you know, were created in 1929, what, what we refer to as the tower. So we are looking at, over the course of the next year or so, with some of the extra funding to look at air quality and things like that that we're allowed to spend the money on. Um, but under the current economic status and with the lack of plan con um, at the state level, I just do not, I do not see a building project on the horizon, that is for sure. We're going to continue to make what we have better and uh, do the best we can for the community here. Yeah. Academically, when we think about Marion Center, both at the elementary, the middle school, and the high school level, so that's actually three levels, um, let's talk a little bit about academics at Marion Center. In this past year, of course, we talked earlier about um, uh, the students and their ability to adapt. Um, Are you pretty happy with the way that Marion Center educationally is meeting the challenges in terms of curriculum, uh, developing new technologies, all of those things? Yeah, um, we are trying to be as innovative as possible. We did revamp our entire high school uh, curriculum this year and course offerings, giving students more pathways towards graduation and to be able to um, customize their education for their individual needs. We're um, offering some new uh, technology courses in the high school, um, more uh, 3D printing, graphic design, um, just trying to reach out and meet not only the needs of our students, but the needs of our of their future employers. Yeah. And so we're excited about what this year has to offer. I mean, it's a, we're going to have a fresh new look to our curriculum offerings in the high school. And during the scheduling process, I can tell you our students were excited about having options and some of the diversity within our curriculum. So we're looking for good things this school year. Yeah. And, and of course, with this past year and the adaptability to uh, online learning, um, that can be used as to your advantage, can't it, in terms of uh, uh, cyber offerings that the school is able to do, uh, charter school offerings, and, and the way that you can expand uh, the offerings that you have. Absolutely, Todd, but I always warn it as a slippery slope. The best place for our kids to be is here at school with us. Um, I strongly believe that, and I think all my peers would agree also. But through our ability and, and let's say, you know, um, being – forced through the pandemic to expand our, our capabilities with the cyber world and uh, virtual learning. We are offering some courses to our students through our cyber academy that otherwise we couldn't offer um, here at Marion Center, some foreign languages and so forth. So it does open some doors for students who uh, seek to have curriculum that you just can't offer those singletons um, in our public schools. But um, we're excited about having, again, customized education, and, and you're, you are correct, the, the um, virtual platform has opened some new doors for are the students here at Marion Center. Clint Weimer is our guest. He's the superintendent of the Marion Center School District. Um, one of the problems, of course, uh, for all of our Indiana County school districts is we're so, um, we're so technologically challenged in terms of broadband availability. Marion Center was particularly hard hit, I think, in this past year because of the, the extra steps you had to take uh, for online offerings. Uh, technologically and in terms of broadband, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're looking forward to the expansions that we're hearing about from the county level, but uh, uh, are, is Marion Center pretty solid now in terms of uh, broadband and availability of the Internet for everybody? Um, I wouldn't use the word solid, but I would say we we're much further down the road than we were prior to the pandemic. Um, we did a major push on providing our families in need of hot spots. But again, cell service is even spotty uh, here at Marion Center. But we have found means via the hot spots, the current broadband services we have. And if a student needs it and we are forced to, no matter what, we'll get them the packets they need. Um, I would not solely rely on our ability to go 100% virtual 
But if we are forced, as we were last year, um, we provide the means, whatever we have to do to get the kids the education they need. Um, the expansion of the broadband is much anticipated here at Marion Center, and I know it is throughout Indiana County um, because you, you hit the nail on the head, Todd. It is challenging when you have to flip the switch and provide that online service. When you, you know, when we started the process, we had uh, over 170 families that did not have the capability for, for Internet. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we narrowed that down to a, a small group of maybe 20 that even the hotspots would not work for. So we'll, we'll customize and do whatever we have to do. But, man, we're eagerly waiting the day when everybody um, – can receive that that broadband service. Yeah, it's interesting the way you put that. Had to flip the switch. That's you literally had to flip the switch uh, when when the pandemic hit, and uh, everybody did their absolute best to make sure that uh, things worked out as as well as they could. Clint Weimer, Superintendent Marion Center School District. Thanks so much for visiting with us this morning. I appreciate it, Todd. Anytime. Have a great day. You too. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160.